I want everyone to consider if they can remember a time they've opened up to seeing one, someone else's point of view, if they've differed completely. How many of you, sitting in class, actively participate in the whole entire Harkness discussion? I bet most of us just say what we believe is right and then zone out for the rest of it. But if someone challenges your belief, do you dig in to defend it? Nowadays, we are so closed-minded as individuals that most of the time, we will not open up to hear the facts. This closed-mindedness is not just stuck in schools, but it is seen all throughout the nation, especially in politics. Isn't it crazy how our leaders on Capitol Hill are just as closed-minded as the average high school student? Congress has become a battleground, bolstered by media outlets looking to make profit, and two parties that use the funds they raise to try to steer the decisions of politicians in one way or another. Since these parties have polarized Congress and the media has covered these fights, millennials like myself have been seeing this, learning from the environment, and entrenching ourselves in firm beliefs. Since the media blows up politics into some sort of bloodbath between two parties that never seem to find a middle ground, I was wondering who I should vote for and what policies I think can help. So being a curious individual, I went to Google. I dove into many political articles and party platforms tr to try and find out which wings, left or right, ideals I aligned with. I watch CNN every day, and trust me, CNN has no shortage of political talk. <laughs> it turns out Chris Christie was just spotted at McDonald's eating a Big Mac. Thanks, Wolf Blitzer. I totally cared so much about that. But anyways, I consumed more information about politics than one could possibly think of and wondered about the following issues. Why are we so polarized to different sides of the spectrum? And why can't our leaders find a middle ground? The root of American politics, just like in every country in the world, stems from political science and the subdivisions within. Political science is a social science discipline that deals with the systems of government and the analysis of political activity and political behavior. It deals extensively with the theory and practice of politics, which is the determining of the distribution of power and resources within a nation. Many believe that the study of politics is seen as early as in the works of great philosophers Plato and Aristotle over 2,000 years ago, studying matters concerning the divisions of power, as well as the roles and systems of governments, governance they knew of, including governments, international organizations, political behavior, and public policies. So now that you know a small background on political science, let's start simple. Focus on the word compromise for a moment. The word is very interesting, having both a positive and a negative connotation. Now, when using in a positive light, compromise means to make an agreement to make something better and to make good in a situation in, in, in a negative light. It means finding a middle ground in a dispute by giving into some of the ideas on the opposite side of the spectrum. Nowadays, in politics, we see compromise in the negative light, but it was not always this way. In the days of our founding fathers, compromise was seen as a positive in America. Our founding fathers negotiated and came to a post-revolutionary war compromise with England, letting the colonies become free. Soon after, when the Articles of Confederation failed, they compromised and found a middle ground amongst the states once again, creating our Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Our Constitution came to be from a compromise. States and people found the middle ground, creating the entire blueprint for how our nation lives by today. These situations were positive. So now we fast forward 229 years, compromise is negative and is rarely seen. It is now so rare that we see the middle ground found, it took six years for Congress to compromise on a new budget. Six. So as I was researching, I stumbled upon a Duke University-ran study to see if one, one, one end of the left-right political spectrum believes more strongly than the other in the superiority of their ideals. In this study, they found that each party had beliefs, had beliefs of superiority depending on the topic of discussion, and those who are considered extreme one way or the other felt most superior. Dr. Caitlin Toner, the lead author of this study, stated these findings helped to explain why politicians with more extreme views can't reach across the aisle. In other words, they think they are superior, it cannot be wrong, that they cannot find the middle ground and compromise. Human nature plays a large role as to why we can't find the middle ground as well. The backfire effect, also known as belief perseverance, is a large misconception amongst people. 
The truth is that when our deepest convictions or beliefs are challenged by contradictory comments or evidence, our beliefs actually get stronger rather than incorporating the new information into changing our thinking. This concept was proven again by another study done by the University of Michigan and Georgia State University. Together, they created a fake newspaper, one reporting false facts. After, they gave the same people a real newspaper reporting the truth. One article focused on in the study was a piece on the war in Iraq. The fake newspaper said that weapons of mass destruction were found, which is false, and the real newspaper said nothing was found, which was the truth. Those opposed to the war believed the second article, while those who supported the war supported, tended to agree with the fake article while strongly, while strongly refuting the second. It was repeated over and over with different issues, and anything that was threatening to an individual's belief, that person refuted it as fast as possible. This intrinsic effect happens in our minds, that happens in our minds is something very powerful. Policy making in our nation involves looking at two totally opposite viewpoints and trying to find the middle ground, a compromise. But that cannot be done if our minds and our Congress's minds strengthen, the, strengthen in their opinions when refuted by the other side. It may seem simple to say to yourself to make an effort to not let this happen, but it is not as easy as it seems. In order to prevent belief perseverance from taking effect, effect, we need to overcome the phenomenon that we are more likely to believe in a statement made if it supports our own opinion, known as the confirmation bias. In an argument, if we only listen to and take in the things said by the people that share the same beliefs as us, we support ourselves even more and then refute contradicting, contradicting information even further. If both of these happen, polarization is something that may be here to stay. Although being a voter seems simple, these principles show that we should be more careful in our political actions and discourse than we actually are. So in November of 2015, I finally turned 18 years old. I can leave home if I choose, I can sign my name on legal documents, but most of all, I am now an adult citizen. I can vote. I can, in some indirect way, with one check mark next to a name, make a difference in our nation's future. My peers and I who will vote for the first time aren't just voting in any election. Our first time voting in an election will be a general election when we decide the next president of the United States. Nowadays, with economic pressures, global instability, and climate change, the position of president has never been more difficult, but picking the right person for the job has never been more difficult as well. There is only one way to stop this evolution of polarized politics from becoming even stronger. The only people that can stop it is us, the voters. Us voters must look past the games parties and networks want to play and prevent ourselves from getting as polarized as Congress is. First, we need to make a conscious effort to overcome the confirmation bias. We also need to make sure to listen to others in order to accept as many facts as possible before we strengthen our own beliefs. Once we have the facts, voters need to demand more transparency in politics, and they must find who they believe the best leadership would be. The American public must avoid the bait the world of politics is throwing at us and stop the pandemic politics is and has been becoming for some time. If the voters find a middle ground, Congress will too. It all starts with the voters, so let's take a stand.